Hello. How are you doing? I'm on quarantine, as everybody else. And, well, we are wondering how to make the studies of anatomy easier to you. So, I decided to make a video about one very complicated subject, from my point of view, and it's the autonomic innovation of the structures in the head. Regarding the cranial nerves, it's much information in the lecture material in the book and well i'm still waiting for your questions about it i will answer them at once as i get them but regarding the autonomic innovation there is no one chapter in the book you have to gather information from all the areas and therefore you will find the most important things in this video so after this introduction, you will see the explanation of sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, where they come from, how they reach the organs of innovation, and what those organs are. And then at the end of this video, there is also a bit funny explanation of the same thing, which I suppose will make it even easier for you to remember. Good luck. So, let's talk first of all about the parasympathetic fibers. Uh, and the first nucleus that we're interested in today is in the level of the midbrain. It's called Nucleus Accessorius Nervi Oculomotorii. Nucleus Accessorius Nervi Oculomotorii, also called the Edinger Westphal Nucleus. Uh, it belongs to the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number three. The fibers from the nucleus, the preganglionic fibers, they reach the second neurons that lie in the area of the so-called ganglion ciliaria. Ganglion ciliaria, the ciliary ganglion. And from those second neurons, the fibers, well, their axons, they form the so-called short ciliary nerves and they reached the two muscles that are innervated. Musculus sphincter pupilla and also musculus ciliaris that are located both in the eye. The second nucleus, which is also parasympathetic, so now we're talking about the parasympathetic fibers, uh, the second nucleus is Nucleus salivatorius superior, the superior salivary nucleus belonging to cranial nerve number 7. Uh, the fibers going from this nucleus, they first of all form the greater petrosal nerve. Those fibers, they reach the ganglion, called ganglion pterigo palatinum and the fibers from this ganglion they reach the organs of innovation that are the lacrimal gland and some small glands of nose palate etc so that's the first way from the nucleus elevatorius superior uh, the second way is forming another nerve which is called the Horda Timpani, uh, and then branch of it, the lingual nerve, nervus lingualis. Those fibers, they reach another ganglion called ganglion submandibularia. And from this ganglion, the fibers, they reach another organs of innovation and they are the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands. And now the third parasympathetic nucleus we are talking about today, called Nucleus salivatorius inferior. This one belongs to cranial nerve 9, nervus glossopharyngeus. The fibers, they form the lesser petrosal nerve. 
lesser petrosal nerve reaches a ganglion, uh, which is called the otic ganglion, ganglion oticum, and the fibers going from the ganglion oticum, uh, they join the auricular temporal nerve, and they reach the parotid gland. So you see all the innovation to all the parasympathetic innovation in the head. It comes from those three nuclei belonging to cranial nerve number three, cranial nerve number seven, cranial nerve number nine. And then there are four destinations. It's important to understand that when we're talking about the autonomic nervous system, uh, there is always a ganglion on the way. So in somatic nervous system, let's say, in the somatic motor division, the fibers from the very first neuron, they will reach the organ of innovation. But in the autonomic nervous system, the fibers, they should switch somewhere on the way. And it happens in the ganglion. So that's about the parasympathetic fibers. Now what happens with the sympathetic innovation? It's very important to understand that in the brain there are no sympathetic nuclei at all. All the sympathetic nuclei, they will lie in the spinal cord. So let's say all this area is in the brain. And now when we come to spinal cord, we're interested in the segments from C8 to T1, so some say to T2 or T3. And you may remember that in those segments, there is so-called nucleus intermedio lateralis, a nucleus which forms the lateral horns of the spinal cord. So here the preganglionic fibers begin the fibers go into some kind of ganglion. And from the nucleus intermedio lateralis, lying in those areas, the fibers, they will reach the ganglion. And in this case, the ganglion is called ganglion cervicale superius. It is a ganglion which is located uh, in front of the transverse processes of the second and third cervical vertebrae. It's quite a big ganglion. It's usually described as a ganglion of three centimeters in size. And from this ganglion, we have the postganglionic fibers going to the organs of innovation in the head. Now question how to reach the head. So the fibers have to ascend somehow and come to the eye, to the salivary glands, to another organs of innovation, and they do it using the walls of the arteries. So let's say the fibers, first of all, they use arteria carotis, interna, they join the long ciliary nerves, and the long ciliary nerves, they come from the nervus nasociliaris, which is a branch of nervus ophthalmicus, which is a branch of nervus trigeminus, or they can also join the short ciliary nerves we were talking about right here. And then the fibers, the sympathetic fibers, innervate the blood vessels, the sweat glands, and also four muscles in the eye. Uh, well, usually in most of the books, two muscles are named here. Musculus dilatator pupilla, or so the muscle for dilation of pupil, and also musculus tarsalis superior, so-called Müller's muscle, the muscle which keeps the tonus of the superior of the upper eyelid. But, well, to be more precise, two more muscles are innervated by those sympathetic fibers. Uh, musculus tarsalis inferior and also musculus orbitalis, 
So all the muscles you see are located in the eyeball. Uh, now, so it was the area of innervation of the eye. So the sympathetic fibers, they reach this area. Uh, another organs of innervation of the sympathetic fibers in the head. From the same, ganglion cervicalis superius. Once again, the fibers, they ascend using the walls of the arteria carotis interna. The fibers form the so-called deep petrosal nerve, and they also innervate the lacrimal gland and the small glands of nose, palate, and also the blood vessels. So that's the area of innervation, let's say, of this area, which parasympathetic fibers came from the ganglion pterygopalatinum. Now another thing that some sympathetic fibers, they will use the walls of not arteria carotis interna, but arteria carotis externa, and its various branches, like the, say, the facial artery or the maxillary artery. And talking further, the sympathetic fibers from the ganglion cervicalis superior, some of the fibers, they will go using the walls of arteria carotis externa, then the walls of arteria facialis, its branches, and go to the sublingual and submandibular glands. So the area of innervation coming from the ganglion submandibularia, which was described right there. And finally, some of the fibers, some of the sympathetic fibers from the ganglion cervicalis superius, they will once again use the walls of arteria carotis externa, then come to the walls on arteria maxillaris and arteria meningia media, its branch, and innervate the parotid gland. So the thing which was innervated here by the fibers from the ganglion oticum. Uh, the other sympathetic fibers, they will innervate some other structures in the head, like the pineal gland, like the carotid body, like the choroid plexus, and also, let's say, the thyroid gland in the neck. So, to summarize what I've just talked to you about, when we're talking about the autonomic innervation to the head and neck, the parasympathetic fibers, they come from the nuclei in the brain. The sympathetic fibers, they come from the spinal cord. The fibers, both sympathetic and parasympathetic, have to switch on their way and to form the ganglia. The parasympathetic ganglia, they lie once again around the brain, in the head. The sympathetic ganglion is located in the neck. And then the sympathetic fibers, they reach the head using the walls of arteria carotis interna or arteria carotis externa. So, now the visual example. This children playground, which has two floors, the ground floor and the first floor, will represent the trunk with the spinal cord and also the head and neck with the brain. So now, first of all, me. I am professor. In this case, this P letter stands not only for professor, but also for parasympathetic nuclei that are located, as you see, high on the level of the head. So they are in the brain. And those nuclei, they send the fibers also to the head and neck. So everything stays here on the second level. Now, this is my son. In this case, S stands for son and also sympathetic fibers. You see how the sympathetic fibers climb upwards to the head and neck using this ladder. And the ladder, in this case, represents arteria carotis 
interna and arteria carotis externa. So that is the difference.